don't think that I am against you when I laugh at crazy things that you say. Hey. Hi guys and welcome again to Smarter Than That where we explain scientific concepts in a fun and exciting way using home experiments. For over a year now, I've been listening to a podcast called The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe. You should go right ahead and sign up. The link is right there. So last week in one of the segments, they were talking about DNA and the fact that Friedrich Miescher found DNA in 1869. Like, how could anyone produce DNA in 1869 where we only found DNA or found the meaning of DNA 50 years ago? with pretty advanced technology and 1869 you know we didn't have computers we didn't have you know half the technology that we have today um, or in 1950 so I started researching so today's experiment is meant to show you that you can do that in your own kitchen with relatively very simple tools and if we can do that in our kitchen then that explains how someone could do that in 1869 in a lab even if it wasn't a very advanced lab. So what do you need for today's experiment? First, sodium chloride, which is a fancy name for salt. Second, liquid soap. Beakers, I'm gonna use two. Two bottles, a rod to poke at whatever we'll produce later. Any sort of device to measure the liquids, okay? I'm gonna use this little nasty thing um, that is actually not that nasty. It's used to feed um, dogs their medicine. Bottled water, distilled water, rubbing alcohol, and a cup. First, we're going to take around 8 grams of salt, which is sodium chloride. We need to add 92 milliliters of distilled water on every 8 grams of sodium chloride. So we have a solution of sodium chloride diluted in distilled water. Now in the other bleaker, we're going to put 25 milliliters of liquid soap and 75 milliliters of water. And we're going to mix it a little bit just to make sure that it is a solution. We're going to take one milliliter of the sodium chloride solution and pour it into one of our bottles. There we go. We have inside here one milliliter. So right now we have two solutions. In one bottle we have 100 milliliters of liquid soap and distilled water. The other bottle holds a solution of sodium chloride, which is salt, and distilled water. And we have a little bottle here with a little bit, one milli milliliter, of that solution over here, which is the sodium chloride and distilled water waiting for us. Now here comes the cool part. Before you do this step, you have to clean your mouth thoroughly and then put a little bit of water, just drinking water from our bottled water um, uh, bottle uh, inside a cup, put it in your mouth and just twirl it around for about 30 seconds. So, cheers. Not very ladylike, but this should contain my DNA. So after um, I did that, this bit of water contains my cells and we're gonna extract the DNA from this part. Now remember this little bottle with one milliliter of sodium chloride solution. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this thing inside here. So now in this bottle we have my cells, which I twirled around my mouth to gather the cells, and along with sodium chloride solution. And what we're going to do is we're going to add 
a little bit of that stuff in there, which is the liquid soap. As you can see, solution of liquid soap with distilled water. We're going to put a little bit of this inside here. I think about one milliliter. So, inside here I have my own cells along with sodium chloride and liquid soap solutions, of course. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover that thing up like this and gently twirl it around. There we go. Now, this is the last step and usually the most complicated one. We're going to add rubbing alcohol, about five milliliters. The thing is that the rubbing alcohol should not be mixed inside. It should float. Remember last time experiment? Alcohol should float on top of water, even if those water um, include my own cells. Okay, so we're gonna add five milliliters of rubbing alcohol inside that thing at an angle. I hope it'll work. Let's see. Those are five milliliters. And as you can see, we have two levels here. One level is a little bit murky. It's my cells, along with um, the soap and the salt. And at the top, floating, I'm not sure you can see it in the camera. I'm gonna try and get a closer look. Uh, you can see the rubbing alcohol floating on top. And what's gonna happen next is that if this is successful, then the DNA from the cells inside that I took from my own body will float and will be trapped inside the rubbing, rubbing alcohol. Hmm. While we are waiting for the solution to do its job, let's go over what it is that it's supposed to do. A DNA exists inside a cell's nucleus. And a cell is surrounded by a kind of a skin. It's called a membrane. In order to see the DNA, we need to first break apart the membrane and release the trapped DNA. This is the job of the soap. Soap has detergent in it, and a detergent can melt away some of the chemicals that hold the membranes together. So by adding the soap, we broke the cells and allowed the DNA to exit the confinement that it used to be in. Since DNA is positively charged, the molecules reject one another. By adding the salt, which is negatively charged particles, we combine them together again. The alcohol allows us to see the DNA because DNA melts in water, but it does not melt in alcohol. That is why we end up seeing the DNA floating around in our alcohol layer. So I've waited for five minutes and something appeared in the layer of the alcohol. And this is really cool. And this is the stuff that was found in 1869. Now there's no way for me to actually see the helix um, of, of the DNA, of course. This is, the helix is just too small. And that's why it took a long time after the discovery of this little sweetheart to find the actual helix. But still, this is DNA, and this was extracted from my cells in my own kitchen. It's just amazing. There we go. And it all comes down to being curious. You hear something new, and you wonder how it was done. How is it that someone in 1869 managed to discover DNA? Hey, I think I'll grow you and nurture you and you'll be just like me.